want to say hello today from the Schomburg Library. Today we have a very special guest with us, Daksha from the Kenneth Young Center. And she's um, joining us today. She is the caregiver specialist at the Kenneth Young Center. And she's going to be sharing so much valuable information today with us. So thank you so much. We're going to be recording this and we're going to be answering your questions in the chat. And then this will be on YouTube uh, too. It'll be posted on YouTube and it'll be available there if you want to go back and watch anything there. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Renee, for inviting me. Hello, everyone. My name is Daksha Sangavi. I'm caregiver specialist at Kenneth Young Center. We are so fortunate in this community to have so many caring professionals that work for so many caring organizations that we have available to us in this community. So it's really a pleasure. Can you tell us a bit, uh, Daksha, about your uh, job at the Kenneth Young Center and your work that you do with the seniors? Sure. So Kenneth Young Center provides services for children, families, and older adults. We also have programs for people with mental health challenges. Older Adult Service provides assistance to the seniors and their families in their homes um, or with other services that they might need. Our team assesses the situation, provides appropriate services, also some of the supportive services like money management, meals on wheels, et cetera. My program is Caregiver Resource Center and I have been the caregiver specialist for 20 years since the inception of the program. I have developed my program based on the needs of the community and I have researched and I keep myself up to date with all the resources and newer information that's available uh, so that the clients and families can benefit from them. Um, I meet with, with families individually. I have support groups as well as educational seminars like this one to help people do better. Um, and get the counseling and the information and the resources that are always coming up. Um, so I, I just would encourage people to seek help and uh, find out the resources. So the last time we spoke, I believe you told me that everything that you provide to seniors and to their family members at the Kenneth Young Center is provided free of charge. Is that correct? That is true. Our programs are state funded, as well as we receive uh, contributions and donations from private, as well as other community organizations, which helps us go that extra mile to help and support the families in our community. So while Daksha is getting her slides ready, I just wanted to let everyone know that there'll be another program coming up two weeks from today, that's June 25th at 1 p.m. And what will happen is that program will be about Alzheimer's disease and dementia and what you need to know. That will be at 1 p.m. June 25th and register the same way that you do from the website. Thank you, Renee. So today we are going to talk about planning for the future and navigating your options so that we are best prepared to enjoy our golden years. So uh, we are going to talk about planning for the future and we are going to talk about societal changes. So lessons we have learned from the history um, or evolution is that the things are always changing. Society is evolving and we need to adjust and adapt or we are going to have difficulty with the changed envi environment. Change is inevitable. It is how you respond to it that matters the most. We have evolved from being a caveman or cave woman to an individual who belongs to a family, a society, in the country. We celebrate birthdays and weddings and other occasions to enjoy the events together and mark special milestones. 
We have family units, extended families, and we value our relationships with the family, the community, and the workplace, etc. We have developed a legal system that everyone needs to abide by to coexist in harmony. These rules did not exist thousands of years ago. A fun fact here, you know when a first law was created? That was in 22nd century BC. The oldest known code formulated um, was in Sumer, and that is modern day Iraq. We have moved from barter system to the currency. And have you even heard about the Bitcoin? We have gone from wandering in jungles to wearing clothes and, and adding sophistication to our environment, our home, and our, our uh, lifestyle. So these. Well, we have medical advances where we have eradicated diseases like polio, chickenpox, etc. And we are having so many advances in healthcare. Um, we are not no longer depending on the herbs and the primitive way of treating different conditions, which sometimes was fatal. But now medical advances are helping us treat so many diseases and help us live healthier and longer life. So let's talk about, we talked about revolution, let's talk about living well in 21st century. So um, societal changes continue through the cycle of life. How your parents took care of their parents have changed for you and me. Support system is fading away. You might be working, raising children, or helping raise even grandchildren. You might have limitations due to your own health or finances. You don't have the support from the other family members that probably your parents had. Hiring help is getting expensive and affecting your finances, as you know. Healthcare has made so much progress that treatments and options are almost never ending. Navigating health care insurance options that keeps changing and it can become overwhelming. Add to that the fact that we are living longer and might need help along the way, which means most older adults are going to need help and may not have enough support system or resources to get the help they need. The options are many, sometimes confusing, not what you would like, and the resources are inadequate. All the healthcare services are stretched to maximum and sometimes still fall short to meet the demand. So it's critical that we know how to live well and healthy, as well as how to prepare for the future. When we talk about um, society and the system and the changes, we have to consider also the individual situation in reference to the society that we live in. So the benefits, um, I'm sorry, the beliefs you hold about yourself and the world, your emotions, your experiences, your relationships, they all influence your mental and physical health and determine how you live your life, your spirituality, and your principles determine the path that you would choose. Your social environment, family relationships, and the community you live in is going to influence your actions. And of course, we might want, want to spend time in a five-star hotel, but we have to work with our budget and our resources. So it is our financial resources that impact the way we live our life in addition to the preferences we have. So as we think about our future, it's quite important that we plan well, considering all these factors. So empowering yourself, it's important that we look at all our options, information and resources, and understand the implications, seek and accept the services, 
and ask and ask again until we get the help we need. Knowing your options, that's the basic foundation of planning for your future. It is the best that you know all your options so you can choose the one that suits your needs the most. First of all, plan ahead. It's never too early to think about what can I do as I transition from one phase of life to another. As an adult, I have to think about what I can do if my parents need my help. And as we move to being a senior ourselves, we need to think about if I need some assistance or my family member needs my help, what should I do and what can I do? So it's important that you get educated, you learn about the resources. You have already started the process by being here today, attending this seminar. We are going to talk about a lot of information which is, um, which is going to be helpful to you. And um, we are going to talk about building the support system. It is heartbreaking for me when I see the clients who are struggling and have no one they can count on. I'm not talking about someone taking care of you 24 seven or living with you. I'm talking about someone you can talk to, who you can trust for a good advice and who can support you when you need it. So developing good relationship with friends and families and seeking help um, helps you to get through tough times. So review all your options. The most important step is to know all your options. The one that you hate today may be the one you choose when the situation changes. So be aware of your options so that you can pick the one that works best for you as times change. Be proactive. The most important of all, be proactive and not reactive. With all the steps mentioned here, you can be prepared to manage the changes in your life, which is better than having a crisis when someone else makes that decision for you and that may or may not work for you because you didn't have an opportunity to make the choice yourself. So we are going to talk about when you plan for the future, what are the things you need to consider? Um, there are legal tools to preserve your personal autonomy. Um, it is shocking to me that so many people in their 70s and 80s do not have advanced directives in place. In this day and age, if there are no legal documents in place, your money can be stuck in probate for a long, long time. It is important that family, your family knows about your finances to make sure that you have the most comfortable quality life you can. There are elder law attorneys who can help you with appropriate plans for your specific set situation. Medical power of attorney is another important document in the process of planning and preparing. There is a legal document where you can name a person you trust to have the power to determine the health care you would receive. You might have heard of five wishes, which describes your personal choices and preferences um, about the end of life decisions. Recently, there has been another tool which is called the Conversation Project. And you can Google that, Conversation Project. And um, I, I find this tool very, very helpful because again, it is developed um, to address all the healthcare treatments and the options and the, um, and the you know, DNR kind of um, tools that are available to you. What would be appropriate choices and what are the things you can consider? Because um, some people might want every treatment available to them and the other person might want to have a peaceful end of life at home. So again, that's the conversation you need to have to understand what are your options, what it means to you and make the right choice that you are comfortable with. Um, 
If we know about our family's preferences, it makes it easier for everyone involved rather than having the burden of making that choice for someone else. I think sometimes that weighs very heavy on the family member. So it's better that they know what is your choice. It's a tough decision and you want to make it better for everyone involved. Again, this is one, um, one preparation that it's never too early and you, uh, you have the power to make that choice for yourself. Staying active, keep moving, um, and all the other things described here. We all know we enjoy our life the best when we are active and able to do things that we enjoy and love. It's important to keep moving. There are smart watches that can alert you to get up and stretch every hour and prompt you to stay active by counting your steps. A healthy competition of comparing these steps is a good way to go through your journey. We know that when we learn something new, it creates new neural path pathways. The more neural activity means better brain power, which is so critical as we hear so much about the rate at which Alzheimer's and dementia is growing in our generation. As far as age-related boost, travel gives you an opportunity to break out of your normal routine challenging and stimulating your brain, your mind is kept alert and active, which fosters the creation of, again, neural pathways that might help prevent natural cognitive decline and refresh your mind. At the very least, you will enjoy some stress-free time and come back with photos and souvenirs to document your mental health travels and to remind yourself look at it and enjoy it again. When you spend time on your favorite activity, it gives you an emotional boost to get high on your happy feelings, which is wonderful. Playing games, not on the computer, if possible with the friends. It is fun at so many levels. You enjoy the game, keep your mind active and socialize with others, which is again, another essential component in maintaining your brain activity since it engages so many areas of your brain. Same is true when you create new relationships. When it seems we don't have control over so many aspects of our life, of our life we can choose what we eat. There is so much information in the cyber world about the brain games, brain exercise, and healthy ways to eat that you can pick the one that would work for you. It does not have to be boring or painful. Make it fun. I think even moving, you can make it fun by walking with friends or having one of those um, classes which are like Zumba that is more of a fun activity rather than feel like going to the gym. So next we are going to talk about safety and well-being. I can't emphasize enough that anytime we deal with an individual, we have to talk about holistic approach. We cannot have a band-aid approach without taking into account all the ripple effects. A person's home represents familiar environment, independence, and privacy. That is why the prospect of moving in with a relative or transitioning to a senior facility is one of the most difficult decisions a person has to make in their lifetime. For families who are struggling with this decision, logic often takes a back seat to powerful emotions. Fortunately, there are a lot of tips to make the transition easier for everyone involved. We also need to consider medical um, aspects of when it is okay for a person to be at home. So um, there are some safety concerns. A person staying at home may have difficulty maintaining the house that, that they have lived in for 20, 30 years, and now it might need a lot of repairs. Many families are not used to hiring services and depend on the family members to fix the things around the house 
take care of the yard, etc. And now if the family member is not able to because children live far away or because the spouse has declined in health, that becomes challenging. They may be isolated and not as active as they could be due to the lim limitations they experience. It could be their vision, their confusion, their depression, and the fact that many of their friends are not able to visit them either for similar reasons. I often hear, I'm not there yet, implying that I would go to a facility when I'm in very poor health. When you are in poor health, you are less mobile, not doing well, and when you move to a facility, you would have more difficult time adjusting, making new friends, and miss out on the best part, which is participating in the activities and socializing at dinner times. The difficult task of determining whether an, an aging loved one can remain at home safely needs to be addressed. There are geriatric care managers who are professionals who specialize in assisting older people and their families with long-term care management. They begin by conducting assessment and helping you through the process. Talking about driving safety, that's really a critical issue. I have noticed that sometimes wife allow the husband to drive, even though they feel that they shouldn't, because otherwise they have no way of getting around. And as we can imagine, that becomes very, very limiting in terms of how you can spend your day. Seniors sometimes hide the fact that they fell because they don't want others to think that they can't stay at home independently. So again, th there needs to be an open communication to understand that there are, um, there are resources and services out there that can really help you and still keep you safe at home and as independent as possible. Anytime we talk about aging and planning for the future, we definitely have to consider Alzheimer's or dementia. As we know, we are living longer and therefore the chances of developing Alzheimer's or dementia increase tremendously. If you have to take care of someone with Alzheimer's, we cannot ignore the fact that they are an adult, even if we are taking care of them. There is still the glimpse of life that they have lived, even if it is flickering and not shining fully. We need to be mindful of that and preserve their autonomy and approach them respectfully. While you take care of others, it is also necessary that you take good care of yourself so that you can care for the family member you love. I do believe that if we are able to communicate, it elevates, alleviates so much unnecessary aggravation. Even if you are taking care of a person with dementia, communicating to them that you are trying to keep them comfortable and safe goes a long way. When it does not happen because of their confusion, the person feels threatened and due to lack of full cognitive abilities, they may go into survival mode and fight back, become combative and lash out. I want to emphasize that it is important to get your doctor's advice to understand how the person is affected, if there are other coexisting medical conditions that affect their behavior, to understand how to help them and, and make sure that both the person with Alzheimer's as well as you are safe. I want to give you an example here. Um, I met with this family. Mr. M, who had dementia, advanced dementia, was very pleasant, smiling at everyone. He didn't know a family member from me who was a complete stranger. As I went through my intensive assessment, his attention shifted back and forth. Something about the way it happened made me ask the family, how is his meal time? And the family immediately said, how did you know? 
He's funny. He mixes up everything. Or he doesn't eat at all. He stares at food. So I suggested a few ways they can limit the items that they serve and serving sick ones to help with the meal times. Safety is a huge factor for people with dementia. Um, and I cannot overemphasize that. Safety when driving, safety when being home, and trying to get out of the home to go to the place where they might have been raised as a child. Um, safety with meal times, safety with the medications they need to take. All of these are very, very important concerns. And I'm going to talk about that in my next webinar on 25th in a little bit more detail. But I want you to understand we know so much more now that it's helpful uh, to, to have that education, to know and have the information that you need. What are the options? Some of the options are in-home help, um, where you can hire help, or you might qualify to get some help in the home to help the person who might need some help. Accessing benefits and services, um, as we know, it keeps on changing every year. So to know what are the benefits you can receive to help you out. Um, adult daycare is another option for someone who has health issues. And um, as, as you are having decline in your health, you might need to consider assisted living and long-term care options. So the information is very, very useful and powerful to help us along the way. We know and understand how dementia impacts a person much more than we did 10 or 20 years ago. So educate yourself. Um, we already talked about the healthcare benefits. There are some veterans benefits that so many people have not accessed because they don't know. So get help um, to, to access your VA benefits. You can call, again, any senior services, including the township, to help you through the process. There are technological advances and assistive devices that help you to be more comfortable and more independent. So please get the information about whatever devices you might need. Ask and ask again uh, for resources in the community until you get the help that you need. Empowering yourself, and we are talking about whole another level of information. There is Area Agency on Aging that has lots of resources and information. Um, Caregiver Forum is a wonderful resource that other caregivers as well as professionals provide very useful and valuable information on various topics that many of the families are dealing with. Local townships, Kenneth Young Center, um, you know, we serve the community, senior centers, all of these have great wealth of information. Um, and you can talk to any of these organizations to get the help or the information you need or your family member might need. Um, ARP, A -R -P, they, um, they have some useful information about the checklist for various, um, various things that you might want to look into, like is the person okay to drive? There is a checklist for that. If you are going to go to a facility, what should I look for? Hiring a caretaker, what should, what should you look for? The right questions to ask. So they have various checklists as well as the tips to help you with that process. And that's very helpful. So um, we talked about some of the resources um, and I want to talk about Kenneth Young Center. We serve Schamburg and Elk Grove Townships. However, I want to mention that for my programs, 
anyone can come to attend my programs. So there are some of the programs that anyone can join, like this one. Um, in either way, even if you are out of the area, if you call our intake department, which is extension 189, then um, you would get the, right, get the right direction as to where you can call and get the information. Um, at state level, there is Illinois Department on Aging, and I have the phone number for them. At national level, there are elder care locator. There are similar services available um, with some variation, um, again, nationally. So please, again, seek help, get information, get education, so that you can live the best life you can. Secrets to living well. And you know, lately we hear a lot about um, where, what are the happy countries where happy people live live and um, where people live longer. So some of the um, information, some of the, um, you know, the reports that we hear, um, all of these are very, very enlightening. So secrets to living well, to me, first and foremost is there is always change. We have grown from being a child to an adult to a senior. So anytime there is a change, we need to adjust. And the more resilient we are, the easier it is for us. So um, coping with change, being resilient, being open, being flexible, that's very helpful. Humor diffuses stress. So when you laugh things off, it makes things very easy to cope with. Um, positive attitude like gratitude, forgiving others, forgiving yourself, focusing on finding ways to cope with challenges, challenges in life. All of these positive processes help us access the power of our mind that we may not have tapped into. Do you know we barely use 30% of our mental power? Um, that leaves a lot of power, a lot of energy that we could tap into. In this age of multitasking, we are realizing the value of mindfulness as well. Being still and focusing on our energy promotes concentration, problem-solving skills, and improves productivity. People who are spiritual, they have another tool of how they cope with all the challenges in their life. And that, that is really another powerful tool at your disposal to help you get through the life. Um, again, the more active we are, we are going to enjoy healthier and better life. And finally, I want to leave you with this. We are living longer let's live well. And that's the goal, definitely for me, and I'm sure for you guys as well. All right, Renee. Okay, well, thank you. We had someone talk about whether the slides will be made available, and I know that we will be posting to YouTube, and we will determine the rest um, from there. Uh, would anyone like to ask some questions by chat? I think when they, they can view the um, in the future, so that's another way to access the information. Yes, that's kind of, we decided we were going to put it on YouTube and that everything would be available there. Right. So uh, we have a, a question here. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, so the question involves all the programs that you have at Kenneth Young Center, and if you could elaborate on all the different programs that are available there. Um, I think the best way would be to access kennethyoung.org website for details in the programs. 
Um, I do want to say one thing that right now with COVID-19, we have not stopped our services. We realize this is the time when our services are needed even more than before. So we are making every accommodation, every attempt to, um, to address the needs of the community. Um, like I mentioned before, we serve children, we serve families, we have therapists, we have day treatment programs for um, mental health um, clients, and we have services for older adults as well. We serve the whole full spectrum of society. And then uh, when people do meet with you now by phone, uh, I know that when I started my job, I came out to talk to you to see what was available. I just wanted to emphasize it's a really private, uh, she has a real private office and I'm sure you've done webinars or you've had Zoom conversations or phone conversations with people. So your privacy is guaranteed. And sometimes it's really good to have somebody help you navigate all the resources that are out there because it can be it can be so tough. So yes, I do meet with people in usual circumstances. I would meet with them in my office. I meet with individual family members. I have done family meetings to get you the support or to get everyone on the same page. Um, so if there are conflicts among family members, different views, I just meet with them um, to help each other and bring them on the same page. Um, I'm not a therapist, so I do not meet with them on a regular basis, but I do talk to them, uh, counsel them around the caregiving issues. Um, again, I do everything I can to understand what are your needs, what I can do to help you through the process, and if it's beyond my power, my ability, then I would direct you to the right resource. So whenever we go and serve our senior, our seniors at the senior living facilities, one thing we hear over and over again is, I should have done this sooner. You know, as you were alluding to, you don't want to wait long if you're thinking about making a change, but um, just curious, do you think there's other changes in people's lives where they say, I should have done this sooner in terms of getting a little help around the house, mowing the lawn, getting a little help here or there where they have one of those moments, oh, I should have done this years ago. Right, right. That's so true. I think sometimes people, you know, think that it is best because they are comfortable in their environment but sometimes they may not recognize that that environment is becoming challenging and difficult for them to manage. So it's a good idea to think about that. And again, it doesn't have to be overnight change. You can start the process, maybe ask others who have been in retirement community, what is their experience? And that might help you make your decision it's okay to talk about those things, to discuss pros and cons. And again, I'll tell you, anyone who has moved to a retirement community, like I was mentioning earlier, they stay active, they are happier, and all of that means healthier too. So really, if you are able to, I, I definitely think that's a good way to consider um, living the you know, senior years of your life where you are as active as you could be and happier with others in the, in the community. I, I wanted to add one more thing. Um, there, there was a report that came out, a statistic that was interesting to me, that when people have to transition, they prefer to live in a retirement community with people of their own age and the activities that they enjoy with them rather than living closer to the children. That was interesting to me. Right, and what about, what if they've started the process of moving into a senior facility and then a lot of times, uh, you know, with this COVID happening, the COVID pandemic, um, should they just continue to work with those facilities and see how, it, how that pans out? 
Sure. So if you are thinking of placing your family member in assisted living or skilled care facility, um, you might hesitate right now because of what's going on. As we understand in, a, in those facilities, people are more vulnerable than your seniors in the community. So that might be a valid concern at this point. What I would again think about is all the options. Are you able to temporarily keep this person at home with additional support and services? Maybe you hire some help. Maybe your family members can stop by once a week or so to help you out, take care of this person. At the same time, I would say talk to the facility manager to know about what are the steps they are taking. Because I have to say the facilities are doing a great job of keeping everyone safe and healthy. They have taken some great standards to sanitize the place, to contain the infection. Um, and all of that is very helpful. And that's the dialogue you want to have to understand what steps they have taken. So when you are ready, you are comfortable to take that next step. Again, I want to emphasize that two weeks from today, Daksha will be speaking about Alzheimer's and memory loss and dementia and so forth. So we hope you'll tune in. Feel free to contact her or my name is Renee Anderson with the library and I can be reached at randerson at stdl.org. So feel free to contact me about the library senior services at any moment. And, and um, I would just add a few things here. Um, talking about COVID-19, I just want people to see, um, you know, how we have coped as a society with this situation. It is heartwarming to see how people have been creative and so generous. The chefs are cooking meals and feeding the hungry. And the celebrities and others are giving donations and being generous about um, helping people in need to make sure we are helping each other. Um, in addition to, of course, all the programs that government is offering. So um, I, I think that's something to, um, to feel good about that we are helping each other and we are managing um, the best we can in spite of COVID-19. So I, I want people to think about that. And I also want to mention any of the services at Kenneth Young Center. Please call Kenneth Young Center um, Older Adults Division Intake, which is extension 189. That's where all our services would start for older adults, so please consider that. Um, again, I, I'm really grateful, Renee, for inviting me, for sharing this valuable information in the community. Um, and for people who joined us today, uh, if you find the information helpful and useful, please share with others um, so that they can watch and it can help them empower themselves to do the best they can and be happy and healthy.